Hello, adventurers, and welcome to another Dungeons and Dinners. Now, as promised, I'll be doing Dwarven Beef and Potatoes. This is based on a Hungarian goulash recipe. So, the first thing you're going to need are three decent-sized onions, garlic, about a quarter of a teaspoon. Um, camera woman? Do you want me closer? Yes, so that they can see the ingredients. A quarter of a teaspoon of garlic, one six ounce can of tomato paste, a two tablespoons of paprika, fresh ground pepper, and a quarter teaspoon Two, uh, two, half a teaspoon of uh, pe uh, salt, a third of a cup of oil, and one and a half cups water. So, we're going to come over here. Now, I've already chopped most of the onions to save time on the video. So... Dwarven food. You're going to be dealing with a lot of earth vegetables and meat. Because that's how we think of dwarves. They live underground, in caves, in large mountain holds. They're very Viking-like, very, you know, people of the earth. So, imagine, for a moment, you're preparing your food with a knife that is more or less a undersized axe. So chop accordingly. You know, dainty, light, small dicing is for elves. Dwarves are going to chop thicker. They're going to want more flavor in every bite. So then just chop your onion sections into quarters. Push them off to the side, and there you have it. Now, with the onions chopped, we're going to come over here, and this is where most of the magic is going to happen. This is a large pot. And in this large pot, we're just going to go ahead and dump our oil. That's why we needed so much of it is we're going to need to cover the bottom of this pot. Once we've got the oil in there, switch it around a little to distribute. And then go to a medium heat. I'd recommend about a six. Then we take our onions. And without much ceremony at all, we go ahead and dump them on in. Like so. We get out our handy spatula. And we give that a little bit of a stir. And then we just have to let this cook for a bit. So once the onions get tender, we add, oh, there's one ingredient I didn't show you. That's right. The, probably the most important ingredient in dwarven beef and uh, potatoes. Two ingredients, actually, I didn't show you. The title ingredients, the beef. Now, with your beef... You're going to want about three pounds of beef. About how much beef? Three pounds. Three Sorry. pounds. You just said. Yep. Now, uh, I do have Ranger Liz here working my cam. So, beef stew meat is usually the cheapest beef you can find. It's also the toughest beef you can find. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, this dish 
you're going to want to set aside about two hours to cook it. The first part with the onions, and then you're going to brown the beef real quick in the pan. That is the start of it. Then you're just going to let it cook for about two hours in the pot, just boiling away. And that's going to be where all the magic happens. So, while our onions are doing their thing, we're going to come over here to this mixture here. This is our paprika, our salt, and our pepper. And I'm just going to go ahead and mix all this up, like so. Because what I'm going to do, so I'm going to take this big old Ziploc bag, like this, so. Open up our packages of beef. like so, and I'm going to dump the beef, the paprika, the salt, and the pepper into the bag, and then I'm just going to shake it. Why? Because I want to coat the beef with the seasoning without messing up too many bowls. Because there's one thing we know about dwarves. They weren't big meatniks. You know, they're all about getting some fuel in them and getting back to work. They're a very industrious people. So, they don't want to be spending a lot of time on things like cleanup. I want things to go pretty easy for them. Now, if you're doing this at home, obviously you can just put your spices directly into the bag. I pre-measure things so that you can see them in advance. So then we just take our beef. You know, it's already cubed up for us. That's one advantage to buying stew meat is, you know, it's a little more convenient for making things like stews and goulash, it's already cut up for you. So, as for brands for any of this, I have no recommendations. You know, if you prefer Hunt's tomatoes, get yourself some Hunt's tomato paste. If you prefer you know, being cheap, like a lot of us are. You know, Walmart brand meat and uh, seasoning and all of that is just as good, in my opinion, for this. You know, tomato paste is tomato paste. At least to me. You know, there are a lot of professional cooks who will swear by one brand over another. As you can tell, the plastic bag is something I can just toss out when I'm done. I don't need to be too worried about it. Ah, onions smell like they're starting to really good get a good go on them. tell you this. There is an addition to this recipe that I will not be preparing today, but that you can make. And that is when you go to add the uh, beef to the pot, after you remove the onions to give the uh, beef room to cook so that you can turn it so that it's 
just browned on each side. Um, you can add beer at that time. That will give it a malty uh, flavor. Uh, with my diabetes, though, the beer's out because that also adds sugar. Because, well, alcohol is nothing but straight sugar. But that is an option for you if you so choose. Let the onions go for a bit. Now, when we plate this, it's going to be plated over mashed potatoes. So, when making mashed potatoes, you need a few things. Oh! Oh, let me guess! Potatoes! Yes, potatoes. <laughs> now, a good rule of thumb for this dish is going to be roughly one potato per person. Now, of course, the beauty of mashed potatoes is you can always make more. Mashed potatoes generally travel pretty well. So, I'm going to assume that I'm going to have some people who are going to want seconds. Uh, my normal group is about four people. So, one, two, three, I even got some small spuds in here, so one, two, three, eh, four, five, six potatoes would be enough to cover my group. So, get some kind of clean brush, uh, this is what we call a potato brush. But, honestly, you could use a toothbrush if you want. And you're going to just quickly scrub the potatoes. Now, if you're feeling lazy, or you don't want to mess with real potatoes, you can buy yourself a box of uh, Walmart or Idaho's best brand instant potatoes and honestly I prefer the Idaho's Idaho Gold brand uh, instant potatoes and just mix those with mix those up either according to the package or use some chicken stock instead of water. Tastes really good and is a nice alternative to using real potatoes. So, with that said, we'll cut to a cutaway real quick, and then when we are ready to add the meat, we'll come back. Hello, and welcome back. Okay, so, when I last left you, the onions were still in the pot. They are now out of the pot and on the plate over there. Um, the meat is about ready to go in. And I'm chopping up the potatoes to go into the mashed potatoes. Now, probably the first thing you'll notice is that I didn't skin the potatoes. There's a reason for this. When you consider that dwarves live underground, this means that they eat primarily root vegetables. And in root vegetables, the majority of the nutritional value is in the skin. So if you peel the mashed potato, or the potato before you make your mashed potatoes, you're basically just eating a large amount of empty carbs. All the, almost all the nutritional value of a potato is found in the skin. Now, I know some people just can't stand uh, mashed potatoes when they have the skin. If you are one of those people who absolutely cannot stand them, then peel your potatoes. Otherwise, please leave the skin on for that more, you know, authentic taste and texture. Because dwarves, knowing that most of the value is in the skin, being a 
race like they are, being ingenuitive and very resourceful, dwarves are not the kind of people to be needlessly wasteful. They would not throw away the most healthy part of their food. They would eat it. So, when doing mashed potatoes, that's actually a you know, fairly easy thing to do. You will need a decent sized pot. Like so. Take your spuds, toss them in. Like so. Remember, you're trying to feed an army. So, don't need to be ceremonious. Just chuck it in there. And mashed potatoes, like scrambled eggs, are what they sometimes refer to as an army food. Uh, what is an army food? It is any kind of food that you can easily prepare for a large batch of people and you don't have to worry too much about individual preferences. You know, when you make mashed potatoes, what are you doing? You're mashing up the potatoes. You're making them uniform. It also lets you sometimes stretch a smaller number of potatoes among a larger group. So, really just the ideal epitome of military thinking. So, our oil is hot. Our onions are out. Let's do the beef. So we just take the seasoned beef and we dump it in. And again, our goal is to just give it a quick brown. Because once it's brown, we're going to um, let it cook in the water. Now, as I said, this would be where we would normally add some beer. Now, I don't have any beer. What I do have that I can add is some Worcestershire sauce. Now, You just apply this to the pot, and we let that brown. So, while that's doing that th its thing, we cover up the potatoes so that they can reach a boil. Once the potatoes reach a boil, uh, you're going to take a large, heavy object. It will sometimes look like some kind of cestus or other, you know, melee brawl weapon. Or just a large, heavy, slotted spoon. And you're going to smash them. Mashed potatoes, dwarven style. If you can imagine the dwarven chef in the kitchen, what is he going to have? He's going to have his war hammer. He's going to wash it, and he's going to smash the potatoes. Because he's not going to waste time. He's not going to be delicate. Delicate is not the dwarven way. Of course. Unless you're crafting something. No, I've never seen dwarves be a delicate craftsman. craftsman. They can make some very beautiful crafts. I won't necessarily say they're not, maybe not be the most delicate, but they can make some very delicate, almost elven looking designs, except they'll have a dwarven nature to them. Yeah. Usually I think of dwarven stuff 
as being very practical. Practical. Um, almost more in the design lines of Vikings. So, a tool like this in the kitchen, you might find. Alrighty. And this is a potato masher. Again, you just take the potatoes once they boil, or after they've been boiling for about 30 minutes, and until you get mashed potatoes. They're going to be lumpy mashed potatoes, but that's going to be fine. We have the skins in there, and having a, and that's going to add texture. Having a few lumps is also going to add texture. You're also going to want to add a little butter to the mashed potatoes. So, let's just check on our meat real quick. Okay, that is starting to brown nicely. So, let's just get a lid on the potato pot. And this is what you can call kind of a slower recipe. So you could, once you get the meat browned, this is something you could, you know, brown the meat. And then, if you have a slow cooker, brown the meat in a skillet. Put the onions and the meat in the uh, tomato paste, the garlic, and the water, and a last quarter or last teaspoon of salt all together. And you will have just let that sit in a slow cooker while you're at work. Come home. Pick up your slow cooker, unplug it, toss it in the car with your D&D books, drive to your buddy's place. And you'll have a wonderful meal to share with your group. And then all you have to do is, for example, if you, you can pre-prepare the mashed potatoes, take that, out of the, uh, take that out of the refrigerator and take it with you, or if your game's happening at your place, it'll all, you can just use the one, you can use the one pot, or in this case two pots, uh, one for the potatoes, one for this. Drain the potatoes, just go ahead and mash them right there in that pot. Saves you a lot of work. Otherwise you can use, uh, if you have it, a kitchen mixer and that'll mash your potatoes for you. But. I'm going to show you guys something right now. Liz, if you'd bring the camera over here. Mm -hmm. You'll notice this liquid forming here. That's the meat drippings that are, you know, turning into that wonderful beef base. So that when this is done, this is going to be, again, a dish which has its own kind of built-in gravy. Kind of like the turkey curry which had that cur delicious curry sauce. This is going to have its own kind of beefy, uh, tomato-y sauce to it. Then we just stir it up, get the stuff that started to brown on the bottom up, get the stuff that hasn't started to brown down, and, you know, just keep her going. Just don't... We just need it to, to sear so that all the beef flavors stay inside. The things like the paprika seasoning are working into the gravy down below. So, and into the meat itself. So, uh, we will come back again when the meat is done and I'm moving on to the next step. And welcome back. Our meat is browned in the pot, and now it's time for the final step. Tomato paste, which we just get the, as you remember, can scraper.
pretty much you're going to want one of these anytime you handle any kind of canned ingredients. Because unlike tomato sauce, tomato paste is a lot thicker. They actually uh, remove some of the water from tomato paste. Now, as you saw, I haven't even added our third of a cup of water to this, or our uh, one and a third cups water to this. So this is just all of that wonderful, delicious meat juice, just all in the bottom which is why we browned the meat first, was to pull out that juice. So, now, we've got that in. We are going to just simply scrape this guy clean with what we're going to be using to stir the pot. So, Toss this aside into the sink. And give this a stir. Doesn't that smell wonderful? They haven't invented smell vision yet. Okay, good point. So, you guys can't smell Imagine this. Imagine how it smells. It smells good. Yes, even Ranger Liz is agreeing on this one. Now that I got that tomato kind of mixed in, we take our and a little more for health. And then we add the remaining teaspoon of salt. Uh, I use a salt grinder. I find that Eighteen, nineteen, twenty grinds is roughly a teaspoon of salt. And then we take the onions, if you remember those. Those go right back on in. Try to even get some of that oil back in. The reason why is that oil is loaded with the flavor from the onion. So you, you want to try and get as much of the flavors back in. And we give that one more mix. Just really coat everything. our mixture and then we take our water and dump that in and make sure nothing's riding up on the sides And then we toss a, toss a lid on it and let her boil, cook for the next two hours. And then when that's done, I'll be back. And we're back for the plating. So, basic plate. You'll take some mashed potatoes. Scoop them up like so, and uh, mash it down. 
might be another good one to have in a bowl. We're going to have in a bowl, maybe? This one would also work in a bowl. And you come over here. And you get some of this. And you just put that right on top. Like so. And there you have it. Dwarven beef and potatoes. Easy, simple, and flavorful. And this has been Nate with Dungeons and Dinners. Just remember, every great adventurer deserves a great meal.